speaker is Amy Prieto, an associate professor at CSU who loves teaching students about chemistry so that she and they can find new materials that advance renewable energy. Amy will focus on the rich resources and great work ethics that makes Northern Colorado a unique environment for high-tech startups. Please welcome Amy Prieto. So I want to share with you two of my passions today. One is chemistry. Um, by nature, I'm the kind of person who loves to be in lab. And what I dream about are new ways to make materials that we can use for applications in renewable energy. My second passion, however, is people, and in particular, students. So the kind of research that I do is critically dependent on the creativity and the work ethic of the students that I can recruit into my lab. So what I want to tell you about is a story that involves batteries. And most people don't think of batteries as particularly sexy. Here I'm showing you um, the picture of what was argued to be the first battery. This was developed by Alessandro Volta in about 1800. Um, and it actually came about as a result of an argument between him and one of his very good friends. And these arguments were very heated. They started by doing experiments on frog legs, which they hooked up to two different metals and they can make the legs move. This seems a little bit gruesome, but in trying to figure out why this worked, they decided to build something that would mimic the frog leg, and this is what uh, Volta came up with. It's copper and zinc plates that are separated by cardboard soaked in brine, and it did generate electricity. Now, I mentioned that these arguments were heated. They apparently were pretty spectacular. Um, they called each other all sorts of awful names, but they had a lot of respect for each other. And later, when Volta came up with a better version of a battery, he named it the galvanic cell in, out of respect for his friend. So the point of that story is to tell you that scientists by nature have to interact with each other. That's how we learn, and that's how we test our ideas. Now, just a cool fact, I told you this was supposed to be the first battery, okay. but we've recently discovered jars the, that have uh, been discovered the um, outside really of Baghdad light, so dating to about 200 well. BC. And these jars okay. had a copper plate, a plate of another metal, and they were filled with either wine or lemon juice. And they, that is believed to be the first battery, although we don't know what it was used for. So the point here is that creative ideas come all over the world. Now, why do we care about batteries? Now certainly these applications are a little bit fancier. What I'm showing you are the things that you probably care about first, laptops and cell phones. And what you probably tell me if you're thinking about your batteries is that these devices don't work nearly as long as you would like, and they're also pretty expensive. Now the application I would like to have is the Tesla Roadster, and that's the picture on the top right. Now, this battery has a lot of problems. It is very expensive. It doesn't let the car drive as far as you would like, and um, more concerning are the kinds of fires that can come about as a result of accidents with these cars. But if hopefully if we can fix that, we can move things to things like large-scale grid storage. So you are probably aware that the sun doesn't shine all day and the wind doesn't blow all day. So if we could develop battery technology that could store that power that's generated during those times, we can use it then when the sun sets and the wind doesn't blow. And for that, we need batteries, again, that are cheap, easy to build, um, and last a long time. So when I moved to Northern Colorado as an assistant professor at Colorado State, the first two students I had in my lab had just finished their freshman year. They had only taken general chemistry. They knew the very basics of how to build things, but what they really loved was being in lab and le learning. So I came up with this idea of a battery that I wanted to build that was intentionally ambitious, partly because I didn't know anything about batteries. So I didn't know enough to know how difficult this should be. And our goal was to really solve a lot of the problems that we have with current batteries. On the top here, I'm showing you a conventional battery. Um, I have an iPhone. Battery never lasts as long as I would like, so that's why I'm showing that on, to you on the top. But what I really want to highlight is that those batteries don't last as long, but they also take a long time to charge. They are built with multiple layers that get assembled separately and then put together, and they do produce some toxic byproducts that we'd like to avoid. So what we decided to do was build a whole new kind of battery. We made a list of all of the techniques we were not allowed to use to start with. Nothing expensive, nothing that required high temperature, nothing that required vacuum chambers. And then from that, we decided to use a very different approach, which is to use electroplating. Now, electroplating is used to coat high-end car bumpers, jewelry, pens. A lot of your devices were made using electroplating. And we know that it's cheap, scalable, and fast. The trick was, None of the chemicals that we wanted to use had ever been electroplated before. So we had to come up with new chemistry to do that. And I decided, when whether you call this efficiency or laziness, that since we were going to have to come up with new chemistry for every step to begin with, we might as well make it non-toxic and green to start with, so that we wouldn't have to fix a problem down the road if this battery ever became 
um, commercially viable. So now we make all the pieces out of water. We use chemicals like citric acid, which are a really common food preservative, or um, a polymer that we use that's commonly used as a laxative for infants. So these are literally things you can pour down a sink and you can eat. And what I want to highlight to you is that the original idea may have been mine, but the people who actually made it work were the students. This is just a zoomed in picture of all the steps for how we make this battery and just to show you the kind of imaging we used just because I think it's pretty. But to end the talk, I want to show you the most important part, and that is my group. Here you see the students that made all of this happen. Northern Colorado is incredibly rich in talent and strong work ethic, and this is what's made this kind of an ambitious project possible. Thank you. Thank you.